Tokyo, the beating heart of Japan. Tokyo is usually number one on everyone's bucket list when we talk about Japan, and for good reason. This bustling metropolis is not only Japan's capital, but it is the perfect blend of old meets new. With so much to see and do and eat in Tokyo, the hardest thing is sometimes planning how to squeeze everything in. So in this video, we will be breaking down the best things to see, do, and eat based on our experiences. And hopefully this will help you with your trip to Tokyo. So let's crack on with number one on the list and probably Tokyo's most iconic spot, Shibuya Crossing. We've finally made it to Shibuya Crossing, <laughs> the busiest crossing in the world. It's crazy, there's so many people. This iconic intersection really is worth all the hype it gets. On average, 2.4 million people cross every day. The best part is getting involved in the action by crossing yourself. It really is a surreal experience with the towering billboards and neon lights. This is absolutely <laughs> mental. But be quick because those cars wait for no one. <laughs> Top tip, head to Starbucks and go up a level and get a front row seat and watch the mesmerizing hordes of people cross this Tokyo icon. You can also get a good view of this crossing from the next place on our list, which is Shibuya Sky. This place opened just before the pandemic and has quickly become one of the most popular and booked out experiences in Tokyo. Head up to the 46th floor for 360 degree panoramic views of Tokyo's iconic skyline. Sunset time slots are sometimes booked out weeks, if not months in advance. And while the views are very impressive, try and avoid going during the evening. It was insanely crowded at the top when we visited with every inch of glass taken up with people trying to get their perfect Instagram shot. We actually prefer the views on the way back down. I think it was the 14th floor as you exit where you had amazing views of Shibuya Crossing. Next up, Nakami Dori Street in Asakusa. This 250 meter long path is lined with colorful stalls where you can discover traditional Japanese souvenirs, snacks, and cultural treasures. Even if you weren't looking to buy anything, we guarantee you will leave with something. It's mine! <laughs> And at the very end of this street is Tokyo's oldest Buddhist temple, Sensoji Temple. This is a serene escape from the hustle and bustle of Tokyo. The Kamanaramon gate is so impressive with this huge lantern suspended over you. As you walk closer, you will pick up the smell of burning incense around you with people covering themselves in the smoke in the hope of bringing good fortune. Make your way up to the main pagoda where you can peek inside the beautiful main hall. It's a place where ancient spirituality meets modern tranquility and brings you closer to the history sewn into Tokyo's past. If you're looking for more history in Tokyo, then you must add Meiji shrine to your list. So we've made it to Meiji Jingo Ichino Tori Gate which is just beside Harajuku Station. This is a Shinto sanctuary dedicated to the Emperor Meiji and Emperor Shokun who played pivotal roles in modernizing Japan. The vast grounds cover approximately 170 acres making it one of Tokyo's largest green spaces. What's super nice about places like this is that even though you are in the heart of Tokyo and all the craziness there's still these nice little pockets of green where you can just go for a stroll, get some peace and quiet and just enjoy the scenery. It's perfect. The towering Tori gates are super impressive and gives you an insight into classic Japanese architecture. As you get closer to the shrine, visitors can cleanse their hands and mouths at the fountain before offering prayers and writing wishes on their wooden plaques. This place is great for escaping the noise of Tokyo and is the perfect blend of nature and culture. Not far from Meiji Shrine is Harajuku where you can find Takistra Street. This is a bustling pedestrian street and a hub of Japanese pop culture and fashion. It's one of the most popular streets here in Tokyo. You will find quirky boutiques, trendy cafes and colourful street art. I think we might have to bring her home with us. It attracts all types of people offering a really fun shopping experience that's constantly evolving with the latest trends. You'll also discover weird and wacky food experiences such as these humongous candy frost treats and coffee served by monstrous hands through holes in the wall. Only in Tokyo. In Tokyo, you really are spoilt for choice with Japanese food. You want something? Tokyo definitely has it. One of our favorite places for ramen was Ichiran. And thanks to social media, this chain is now one of the most popular places to eat ramen in Japan. You get your own booth, your own peace and quiet, and you don't have to talk to anyone, including the staff. You can also customize your ramen to perfection. The taste is 10 out of 10. And for around seven Australian dollars, it makes it one of the cheapest ramens you'll find too. Now, if you're just after a quick grab and go meal, then head to one of the many convenience stores. You're probably thinking, this is a strange addition to add to this list, but after a couple of days in Japan, you will understand why. Our favorites had to be the onigiris. They always tasted fresh, had a range of flavors, and were so cheap, but our favorite had to be the smoothies. You can grab a smoothie from the frozen section and make this in store. You can also grab larger meals that can be heated up in store, and yes, they also sell alcohol. We guarantee you'll be visiting one of these stores at least once a day. If you're coming to Japan and not eating gyozas, then shame on you. Most restaurants will have this on the menu, but we stumbled upon gyozo no osho. 
well. They have perfected the art of making these dumplings over years and have chains all over Tokyo. It's a great atmosphere inside and the gyozas, oh my god, it's the perfect balance of crispy golden brown skin on one side and soft on the other, with juicy fillings packed full of flavour. Most are pork, but they do also offer veggie options too. Now to wash down that food, what better way than enjoying an ice cold beer brewed right here in Tokyo. Head to the Asahi Beer Tower in Asakusa and enjoy views over Tokyo on the 22nd floor. There's nothing like having cold Asahi in the actual Asahi headquarters building in Tokyo, Japan. Time for some shopping. Tokyo remains at the height of the fashion scene and in districts like Harajuku, Shibuya and Ginza, they showcase the latest trends and unique subcultures. But one store not to be missed is Uniqlo in Ginza. If you're a fan of Uniqlo, then you have to visit their flagship store located in Ginza, the biggest Uniqlo store in the world. I think we actually spent two hours in this store. I mean, it is 12 stories high. 12 floors of Uniqlo. There was a custom section to personalize any item bought in store and they even had a coffee shop on the top floor. Now, if you're not into high street fashion, why not head to the cool and hip district of Shimakitazawa? This place is known throughout Tokyo for the best vintage thrift shopping. Endless streets and laneways full of vintage stores where you can grab almost any item of clothing. We definitely recommend allowing a couple hours here because chances are you will find a bargain. I'm actually very surprised how many brand names they have in these thrift stores. Like there are rows and rows of like Levi's, Carhartt hats, Ralph Lauren, We've even seen a few luxury brands like Fendi and Chanel in some of these thrift stores. It's quite unbelievable. You might end up finding a bargain. Shibakitazawa is also a great place to grab an okonomiyaki. This is a fried savoury style pancake usually prepared right in front of you by the chef. You usually have the choice of what style you would like, but our favourite is always a Hiroshima style option. It's made up of sliced cabbage, bean sprouts, noodles, cheese, sliced pork belly and a fried egg, topped off with prawns, savoury sauce and Japanese mayo. Expect a dense, flavourful meal that will leave you very full and satisfied. This place is called Hiroki, which was a cute restaurant with only a handful of seating. The staff here were also awesome and very friendly. That was... Delicious. We are very, very satisfied. Now, if you're like us operating at a million miles per hour, then you may need a little caffeine hit to keep you going. The coffee scene in Tokyo is growing all the time, with baristas perfecting the art of coffee making. If you're still in Shimakitazawa, then Brooklyn Roasting Company has your back. Not only does it roast its own beans in-house, they have this really awesome converted warehouse space. If you're in the Shibuya district, then check out About Life Coffee Brewers, which is a little hole in the wall. They served oat milk, where at times other places do not, and the coffee, it didn't disappoint. It is so good. I couldn't wait. I already had a sip. I saw you. <laughs> and it tasted delicious. I love Tokyo, they have the best oat milk. <laughs> Similarly, if you are just looking for a quick cheap Americano, then of course, head to any convenience store. A cooking class in any country is always an amazing experience, but this sushi making class was probably our favorite activity we did in Tokyo. We got lucky and had the whole class to ourselves. We learned everything about sushi from the ingredients, the tools, and of course, making this ourselves. We had so much fun and we were here for easily three hours. Make sure you arrive with empty bellies because you will leave fat and full. Like Shibuya Sky, this is another popular activity that is booked out weeks in advance. Team Lab Planets. There are four large scale art workspaces and two gardens as you walk through barefoot. Yep, you'll be barefoot the whole way, so wear trousers you can easily roll up because you will get wet. Every space is totally different to the next. There was the floating universe of flowers room, the infinite crystal universe room, which is famous for Team Lab Planets. What an experience. The sphere room with color changing huge inflated spheres and one you may have seen everywhere on social media, the floating flower garden room. We were actually a bit disappointed with this room, solely down to how busy it gets. It's a time to entry and you only get about five minutes in this space before you're ushered away but overall it was still worth visiting and really enjoyable it was as good as we hoped it to be if you're young at heart or with a family then this place is for you disney sea in tokyo is a fun day out and if you didn't know there's actually disneyland and a disney sea in tokyo everyone who goes is dressed up in their favorite disney get up but don't worry if you forgot yours because you can pick up something when you're here they have everything you can think of there are seven themed areas all revolving around the sea with so many rides to choose from. We've actually made an earlier vlog of our time here which you can check out. So guys, this is another top thing to do whilst you are in Tokyo. We are in Akihabara at night time. It is pretty crazy, pretty cool. There's a ton of stores and so many. lots of arcades. We just lost about 500 yens worth <laughs> of money in these arcades which are probably rigged yeah, but still. Yeah, you give it a go. Exactly. It's all part of the fun. This is a great place to grab electronics as well. So if you were keen to grab anything specific to do with laptops, phones, tablets, gadgets, this is the place to get it from. This is like the epitome of like Tokyo lights. 
I love it. Oh, I love it too. Okay, after a busy day exploring Tokyo, it's time to unwind and there is no better place than at a traditional Ryokan. We found this cute place located bang in the middle of Tokyo and it offered the most unique hotel experience. It literally feels like you are stepping back in time with tatami floors, traditional furniture and sliding doors. It really doesn't get more authentic than this. Most Ryokans will also supply a yukata that you can wear in your room or in and around the hotel. A Ryokan stay is definitely a must do when you're in Tokyo. Now, this list is slowly drawing to a close but whilst technically these next couple places are located just outside of Tokyo, if you are tight on time in Japan and want to make the most of seeing everything, then these following places can be reached as a day trip. Yokohama is only 45 minutes train ride away where you can eat the best Chinese food in the biggest Chinatown in Japan. And just around the corner is the Cup Noodle Museum. Learn about the history of instant noodles and the best part, you can pop on your chef's hat and apron and make your very own instant noodles and cup noodles. Amazing! How good is that? Last but not least, an icon of Japan, Mount Fuji. This can be reached in just about two hours from Tokyo and was by far one of the best day trips we took during our time here. Check out our video on Mount Fuji where we cover everything you need to know about how to get there and the best spots of seeing Mount Fuji. There is no one here. This is by far our favorite spot of all the spots that we've been to see Mount Fuji today. This now brings our top things to do in Tokyo to a close. We hope you enjoyed this list and it will help you with your planning of Tokyo. If you did find this video useful, we would really appreciate appreciate a thumbs up or even a nice comment. It means the world to us to connect with people like yourselves and helps us continue making more videos like this. Until next time, we'll see you on the next video.